You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're now going to do another one of our regular slots with the CCG. As always, we're joined with something different each time. Firstly, thank you very much for uh, joining us for this regular slot. I was hoping, firstly, you could introduce yourself to our listeners. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, Basically, uh, my name's Fiona Armstrong. Um, I'm a GP. Um, I've been a GP in Swell for 29 years. Uh, the majority of those on the Isle of Sheppey, but uh, I did actually skip over the bridge uh, in the last few years, and I've been working in Sittingbourne. I'm absolutely passionate about the health of people in Swale, um, and I'm actually the clinical chair of Swale CCG. So what does Swale CCG do, and what does the commission in Maine what does commissioning mean? Yes. Um, so at CCG, essentially what we do is we plan and pay uh, for healthcare services for the people of Swale. Uh, we've got a budget of £131 uh, million, uh, which if you work it out, I think is just over £1,000 uh, per patient uh, per year. And so that can be a little bit challenging. Um, but we're looking at planning and paying for health services, particularly accident and emergency, uh, surgery, uh, outpatients and community services. Services, district nurses, community matrons, etc., etc. Um, we don't, however, um, commission, which is hmm, commissioning is from my point of view, uh, essentially buying services, although there's more than just buying, there's more about uh, changing sort of pathways. Um, We don't commission uh, GP services because that will be a conflict of interest because our organisation is made up of all our member practices, all 20 practices, and we don't actually um, buy or commission uh, complicated surgeries such as brain and heart surgery, neonatal care, renal dialysis, says at prisons um, services like that. I talked about um, um, looking at uh, patient pathways. What we need to do is look at the needs uh, of, of people of Swale and along with our GPs, our patients and our public, design better pathways of care. Um, if I can give you an example of that, is that okay? Yeah, yep, that's good. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, we have a new ophthalmology pathway, so that's a, an eye service pathway uh, where patients can actually see their GPs, and if they require an urgent opinion, they can actually be referred directly uh, to uh, our opticians, who will then decide whether they can deal with the problem or the patient needs to go to A&E. So essentially people are getting dealt with locally rather than having to go to Medway uh, or Maidstone. So that's what I mean by uh, actually changing patient pathways. So it's looking at what we've got in place. Does it work? Can we make it better? Can we make it more local? Can we make it more responsive? Now, the CCG has been in place for two years now. Um, What has been done to help improve the health uh, since its formation? Okay. Uh, One of the the key things that uh, we're doing is bringing care closer to home and into our community hospitals. Uh, We're looking to provide seamless, joined-up care, particularly between health and social care, and we've worked very closely with Kent County Council and Swell Borough Council. And a key, another key strand of what we're doing is tackling health inequalities. And I think I'll, I'll give you some examples of what we've been doing. We've created what we call integrated primary care teams, which is a bit of a mouthful, uh, but essentially means bringing community services back into and around GP practices and therefore back uh, closer to patients particularly district nurses. Um, Some years ago, district nurses were integral to general practice and GP surgeries, uh, but somehow um, they drifted away, uh, and we're actually bringing them back into the team so that we've got better team working. And I think that the other thing that we've actually done is, is increase the communication with social care. Because, for example, if you're elderly, you get a, a water infection, for example, you may need some antibiotics, but you may need some extra 
social care in terms of your carers coming in uh, to actually help support you. So we, we're trying to join up health and social care. So that's one of the key things that we've been doing over the past uh, two years. We do have some work to do on that, um, but we're very pleased with the uh, work that we've done so far. Uh, basically, uh, we have a project because health inequalities are very important to us. Uh, we have a project called Beats and Breeds, again in partnership with Swell Borough Council. Um, and what, that, what that's doing is looking at various uh, disease areas. For example, for us in Swell, heart disease is an issue, uh, respiratory disease, bronchitis is an issue, um, diabetes and obesity. And what we're looking to do is prevent illness if we possibly can, diagnose it early if we can't prevent it, and make sure that people have got optimal treatment. And as I say, we're working with our GPs, with our patients and public and our communities uh, to actually deliver that. Um, and we do have um, several we do have several events, uh, and people may already be aware of them. Uh, they can pitch up to these events, have their blood pressure checked, cholesterol done, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and those actually come, um, uh, we advertise those quite widely. So how can people living in Swell get involved and get their views heard? Um, how can people get involved? Well, we've got several ways of getting uh, involved. Um, we have a website, um, so for people who um, do have a computer, uh, that's www. Uh, www.swalccg.nhs.net. Uh, we have a Twitter account for those people who uh, like to uh, get involved with uh, Twitter, and that's at NHS Swale CCG. Or people can simply find us uh, in the phone book uh, and actually give us a ring, and we will actually put people in touch with the appropriate uh, department. We do have, um, from the 1st of April this year, Every GP surgery uh, will have a patient uh, participation group so people can get involved through their own surgery. Uh, that's mainly talking about issues that may affect the surgery, but those actually link in uh, to our uh, Swale Patient Liaison Group, which is more broadly across the CCG, uh, which is chaired by uh, an ex-primary uh, head uh, teacher, Alan Jenner, uh, and he actually uh, sits on our board and he also sits on various subcommittees. So he feeds information about what's happening in the community up into the CCG and we feed views um, out. Um, and it, it's very easy to, to get involved and I'm sure that Alan would be uh, delighted if there are any people out there who would like to get further involved. And again, if they can contact us either through the website uh, or by telephone. Um, I, we, we also have a virtual health network. Um, so for people who haven't got a lot of time, uh, they can uh, join our virtual health network. And again, uh, that's accessed uh, through our website. Uh, we also have a listening post, again, that was uh, named by Alan Jenner, um, uh, the chair of our patient liaison group, which is actually an hour before our public governing bodies. And those, as, as people may be aware, are open to the public as well. And anybody can come along and quiz um, senior members uh, of our organization. Um, I, I'm, I'm there um, as the chair, uh, Mike Gilbert, our company secretary, uh, Gillian Wells, uh, a lay member of patient and public engagement, uh, Alan Jenner, um, as the chair of the um, patient liaison group, uh, and one of our commissioning team, usually Debbie Stock, our, our chief operating officer. And we, we actually sort of uh, are open to any questions and concerns. It's not necessarily about individual uh, problems people have, although we're, we're very happy to try and take that on board if we can and signpost people in, in, in the direction, but more about what's generally happening in the community, what's working, what's not working, uh, what we might consider uh, commissioning, i.e. buying or planning for, uh, for the future. So could you tell me uh, about some of the CCG's upcoming priority and uh, projects? 
Upcoming uh, priorities and projects. Well, I talked about the integrated primary care teams uh, earlier. We want to actually build on that and expand it. So we've actually got a community services uh, review going on at the moment. Uh, we've already, I think I said earlier, had an event in November which looked at community services. Uh, we had a lot of uh, patients and public um, some of our providers, for example, Kent Community Health Trust, who currently provide our community services, and various members of our commissioning uh, body um, who looked at community services, what's happening at the moment, uh, what works, what doesn't work, and what would be better for the future. I mean, for example, bringing uh, more services into the hospital that are currently, for example, provided at Medway is one of the key strands of this. For example, we might be looking at uh, providing a, a deep vein thrombosis service, so that's actually assessing people with clots in their legs um, within our community rather than having to go to our acute hospitals, and there are many more such examples. Um, what we are particularly proud of at the moment is uh, we're working very, very closely with our local schools, um, particularly with regard to um, health initiatives for our young people. Uh, but I think uh, equally importantly, we're looking at actually producing a new educational pathway uh, for people who are interested in a career in uh, health or social care. And uh, we're hoping to actually have this up and running um, by September this year. It's a rather tight timetable, but extremely uh, exciting, I think, for people locally uh, and, and will help us locally um, with some of our sort of recruitment and retention issues if we essentially uh, grow our own uh, staff, as it were. Uh, that also links in to uh, some work that we're doing with district nurses. Uh, in fact, we've got a program where we're, we're actually mentoring uh, nurses within our surgeries, uh, and hopefully, uh, again, they will sort of go on to get district uh, sorry, a nursing qualification uh, and then sort of stay in swale uh, for their career going forward. I, I think sort of one of our, uh, uh, the other important strand of work, we're looking at urgent care, and I'm sure most uh, patients in public, and I think uh, most GPs and health professionals would agree, how to access uh, health care out of hours at the moment is incredibly complex. You can go to 111, there's 999, there's a there's a walk-in centre, there's a minor injuries, etc. So we're actually doing a whole review of urgent care to help to make it simpler so people know who to access and when and actually again bringing those services closer to home looking after people at home when we can but in our community hospitals uh, where we can't. I forgot to mention early, uh, earlier about uh, some of our sex successes and some of our priorities, uh, particularly uh, around mental health. Um, we've actually increased uh, people's access to counselling services. We've actually increased crisis care in the community uh, and actually improved uh, crisis care within the A&E department. I think there's more to do, uh, but, uh, you know, we're very keen uh, to, to ensure that people know that we are sort of focused on, on mental health and we, we brought some of the mental health specialists out of the hospital um, and in the community. So that's helping people uh, stay well within the community. And if they hit a crisis, can actually access uh, a regular sort of mental health nurse rather than having to actually go through the hospital. So I'm sorry, I forgot to men mention mental health. Uh, and people will probably be aware, but I, I will just sort of mention it. We have a very good we website called liveitwell.org.uk, uh, which has an awful lot of information and people might like to, to take a look at that. I think the other thing I forgot to say, I'm terribly sorry, uh, with our next governing body, and as I said, everybody is welcome to, to come and listen. Uh, that's, at one uh, that's on Friday the 22nd of May at Castle Connections in Queenborough uh, between 1 and 4, 4 in the afternoon. But as I said earlier, uh, we do have the listening post where, again, People are welcome to actually pitch up and quiz some key uh, members of the organisation and we will do our very best to, to deal with queries or take them away uh, and feedback when we can. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, telling the listeners all about those areas, all as part of the regular slot we do with the CCG.